Did the Normans descend from ancient Semitic kings of the line of David? Find out today on Survive the Jive. The Normans were originally a group of Vikings who settled in northern France and in 911 they were granted lands by Charles III in exchange for protecting the coastline from more Viking incursions. That land became what's now known as Normandy. Norman is French and it means Northman, aka Viking. These Vikings eventually became French. They adopted the French language and the Catholic religion, and they presumably mixed with the French people. But we don't actually know how quickly they mixed and to what extent they mixed. And so people often ask questions like, how Viking were the Normans? How French were the Normans? But so far, there have been no thorough studies of ancient Norman DNA taken from actual Norman cemeteries, the skeletons there, nor from the descendants of Norman families in countries like northern France or, and in England. So we don't really know for sure how to answer those questions. An attempt by the University of Leicester in England to study the paternal lineages, uh, that is Y. haplogroups, of modern families in the Cotentin Peninsula in Normandy, met with strong opposition from anti-racism activists in France. And that was before the study had even been published. We are worried this will build on the idea that there are real Normans and fake Normans, Jacques de Closmenil told The Guardian back in 2015. And he was the head of the local wing of the Movement Against Racism group. In the current context of xenophobia, it's very dangerous. Racists could use this to say, I've got proof that I haven't got any Arab blood, for instance. This is absurd, of course, not just because paternal lineages don't actually tell you whether or not you have Arab blood, but also because it shouldn't matter. This is about learning what happened a thousand years ago. The paper was apparently published in 2016, but all traces of it have been removed from the internet now. And the only thing you can find on the whole internet to learn about what actually was discovered in that pretty small study uh, is on a single uh, French blog, which includes the text of the results which were emailed by the paper authors to the families who contributed DNA samples to the study. So it's actually the entire text of the email that was sent out to all the contributors. That study involved 89 male participants whose four grandparents all came from the Cotentin Peninsula. I only counted 87 in the actual results and three of those were marked as undetermined, as in they couldn't actually figure out what paternal haplogroup was associated with that family. So the study looked at a uniparental marker called a Y haplogroup, which is passed on only from fathers to their sons. And it forms only a very small part of a man's DNA, and women don't even have it. Despite that, it does tell you quite a lot about your deep ancestry on your paternal line. So that's your father's 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 side, and nothing about the majority of your ancestors. Y haplogroups can be quite revealing if you find examples in an area that are not typical of that area, because this may be due to ancient migrations, and you can detect ancient lineages entering an area that aren't, weren't previously there, may be, when you look at uh, Y haplogroup diversity in a certain region. The study found that the dominant haplogroup, not surprisingly, is R1b. That's actually typical of men from all over Western Europe. They have different R1b clades in Iberia, France, Britain, Ireland, etc. So, yes, you'd expect Normandy to have predominantly R1b as well. It's an Indo-European lineage that arrived in Western Europe at the end of the Neolithic and dominated through the Bronze Age. It's also present in Scandinavia, so we can't use this R1b to easily distinguish which of those Norman families have French origins and which have Scandinavian origins. However, one R1b subclade that was found in some of these families is called R1b M222, and that's typically an Irish subclade. So it could have been brought to Normandy by the Hiberno-Norse, 
who were a an ethnic group of Vikings from Ireland, Norwegian Vikings who went to Ireland, mixed with the Irish and formed a new ethnic group called Hiberno Norse. And they were ethnically Norse, but genetically would have Irish DNA. And they could have been contributors to the Viking settlement of Normandy. And that might explain why a few of those haplogroups were found in Normandy. The second largest haplogroup in the study samples was I1. And that accounts for 13% of the samples. And this lineage grew to prominence in Bronze Age Scandinavia and was dispersed across Europe during the Migration Era and Viking Age by Germanic peoples, such as the Vikings and the Anglo-Saxons. Today, it is associated with Scandinavia, where it is one of the three main paternal lineages of that peninsula. And more than 45% of men possess this genetic marker in certain parts of Sweden. The authors wrote, So we can for now suggest a possible Viking ancestry in Normandy. We can see from European genetic maps that our sample yields almost three times the predicted number of I1 individuals. However, they caution that some of this I1 could have been brought by other Germanic people prior to the Vikings. A more detailed look at I1 subclades in the region would have been necessary to identify whether this I1 is from Scandinavia or had been brought earlier by Franks or Anglo-Saxons. But there's no doubt that I1 in Normandy today has ultimately a Germanic origin from Northern Europe. My own surname, Roussel, is thought to be Norman, deriving from the name Roussel, uh, and would have come over during the Norman Conquest. I can't trace my lineage back all the way to the conquest on my paternal line, but my paternal haplogroup is also I1, which is typically Scandinavian. Now, it could be that this entered Britain with Anglo-Saxons or Vikings, but because the name associated with my family is likely to be French of origin, then it makes it very likely that my family or originates with the Normans, since it's a Scandinavian haplogroup and a French name. Those two combined give you a big clue that it's probably Norman. Besides I1, there were also three samples found with R1A, which is also associated with Vikings rather than the French. The haplogroup J2 was found in just two of the samples from modern-day Normandy. So it's not common in Normandy today. And that's not significant, except that this brings me to the next study of Norman DNA that I wish to discuss today. Here's a quick message from the sponsor of this video, Historic Mail. Look at all these beautiful letters. When you sign up to Historic Mail, you get sent every single week one of these letters containing the reproduction of a letter penned by a famous historical figure, supported by a document providing historical context and a tight version of the letter. Let's have a look at one. This letter is from Franklin D. Roosevelt to Winston Churchill. This here comes with it. It explains the context of when it was written and what was happening during World War II at the time, so you can understand. You get to learn about the fascinating inner lives of the greatest historical figures from the primary source itself, and be reminded of the forgotten episodes of the past. The American History Gift Pack covers letters from 1776 with the founding of the Republic, all the way forwards to 1976 with the Cold War in its height, featuring letters from presidents such as George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and Franklin D. Roosevelt, as well as other historical figures who greatly influenced American politics, such as Walt Disney. You can also send a really beautiful gift certificate with your name and the receiver's name on it to make it really special and personalized. Historic Mail offers 10 weekly letters for only $60. There are also letter packs for 25 letters and a yearly pack of 52 letters for more in-depth exploration through various periods of history. Historic Mail is the perfect gift for history lovers. This Christmas, why not surprise your loved ones with a special gift? Enjoy 10% of all the products with their Christmas sale. Go to historicmail.com, the special link in the description, and use the code THEJIVE, and then you can get any of your gifts with 10% off and help support this channel too. A new preprint was announced in October this year, and it claims to have answers about the fascinating questions of the Normans and their origins. But unfortunately, it is unlikely to provide any of the answers that history lovers have been looking for. The abstract claims that they've identified the Y-Hapler group of Hrolfr, the walker, 
also known as Rollo of Normandy, who's the founder of the royal houses of Normandy, and also an ancestor of William the Conqueror. But has it really identified his Wahabra group? This is what they say. Rollo, together with the members of the House of Boulogne and the House of Montgomery, are descended from the great Norse family of Ulvungar. The members of the Ulvangar dynasty are directly descended from the ancient Semitic peoples of Mesopotamia in the Fertile Crescent. Straight away, this rings alarm bells. They have not acquired any ancient DNA from Vikings or Normans to confirm a link between the Montgomery family and the Viking Ulvangar dynasty at all. They haven't got any of that. They are only looking at modern people's Y-DNA, just like the previous study did. And secondly, the claim that this lineage, specifically the J2 haplogroup, is specifically Semitic, or comes from Semitic kings, has no factual basis, as I shall explain later in the video. But first, let's look at who's behind this paper. The paper has just three authors, and that's quite unusual because these sorts of genetic studies especially the good ones, usually have a huge list of authors, including not only population geneticists, but historians and archaeologists who advise geneticists who aren't necessarily particularly well informed about history, about how to interpret the results that they're finding in ancient samples. Two of these authors are scientists from the University of Bradford. One, M.E.H. Rashid, has a PhD in philosophy looking at medical technologies with a focus on breast cancer. The second is Dr. Mansour Youssefi, who is a lecturer at Bradford in biomaterials within the Faculty of Engineering and Informatics Department of Biomedical and Electronics Engineering. And he also focuses on medical technologies. As far as historical insights go, this study relies entirely on the third author, Eric Hugh Montgomery, who actually studied law but has worked in sciences and is a doctor of philosophy. He is not a formally qualified historian, but has published several books about Europe's medieval dynasties in which he tries to claim that they derive from ancient Semitic kings, even connecting the line of Odin, who is in fact a god of the Vikings, not a human with a paternal lineage, back to ancient Semites. And all historians know that the Vi written sources for the Viking Age include euhemerism, that the Christians trying to say Odin is a human king and that that's completely false and that this is a technique of Christian authors of medieval times to try and denigrate pagan religion as well known. The fact that someone would even consider that Odin was a person with a lineage you could trace shows that they don't really know about this area of history. None of these three authors specialize in population genetics either. None of them are formally qualified medieval historians and the study is being published in the Journal of Physics conference series, which has nothing to do with population genetics or history. And it's also very likely that it has not been peer-reviewed. We can't read the full article, which justifies the claims in the abstract, but it's very likely to be based on the same claims Eric Hugh Montgomery makes in his book called The God Kings of the Vikings, which also makes the same argument from the paper that his family line, the Montgomerys, descend from ancient Semitic kings. Incidentally, my great-grandmother was a Montgomery of Renfrewshire in uh, Western Scotland, just outside Glasgow, so I'm probably related to Eric Hugh Montgomery somewhere along the line. His book contains no evidence to support his proposed connection of the Montgomery family to the nobles of Normandy, and the genealogies often depend on guesswork. There is an assumption that modern Montgomerys descend from Roger de Montgomery, who fought with William the Conqueror at Hastings, that's well known, but the genealogical record is incomplete. He also bases his genetic conclusions on a very limited sample set from the Montgomery Family Tree DNA Project, which tested only limited STR markers, and there's no reference in his research to single nucleotide polymorphisms, which would be more revealing. The FTDNA project and other studies of Montgomery men reveal that their y haplogroup is indeed, as he claims, J2A. But so far, genealogists have not proven this line goes back to Roger de Montgomery in the 11th century. 
I have succeeded in tracing my own Montgomery line no further back than John Montgomery of M Mickle Cloak, who lived in the 17th century. This is the site where their castle formerly stood, not far from Glasgow, which I visited a couple of years ago. While it is perfectly plausible the family originated in Normandy, this has not been proven, and we are by no means certain when the J2 Hapra group became associated with the lineage, so we can't project it backwards that far without any evidence. Hugh Montgomery's book, The God Kings of the Vikings, also claims that the Montgomery ancestor was also a progenitor of the noble Seton lineage. But this is contradicted by conventionally accepted genealogical records and by genetics. The FTDNA's big Y700 testing of the Seton of Winton family reveals that their men possess the R1B Hapler group, not J2A like Montgomery. This has been confirmed without doubt by testing the living descendants of three different Seton noblemen from the 15th and 16th century. One of these, Sir Alexander Seton, born in 1588, changed his surname to Montgomery as part of the conditions to inherit his maternal grandfather's estate, honours and titles. One living Montgomery with a flawless pedigree has been tested and he had R1B, so obviously this is not the same lineage as other Montgomerys, as he claims. He even admits in the book that there are, I quote, a considerable number of Montgomerys who are not J2. And he attributes this to clan law of Scotland allowing women to become chiefs and for their children of a different paternal line to then adopt the clan name. Clearly, this is a very shaky methodology. This paper is very unlikely to make national news because it isn't a large or significant study. But the lack of proper genetic studies of Norman DNA mean that those who are looking for answers might be led astray by the misleading claims that this study contains. And I think a lot of people might stumble on this study in the search for answers about Norman origins. That's why I wanted to debunk it in this video. But for now, all we can say for sure is that the Normans were a mix of Nordic Vikings and local French people. But a more detailed explanation of this will have to wait until a proper study of samples taken from medieval Norman cemeteries. So where does J2 haplogroup actually come from? Is it from Semitic kings, as Hugh Montgomery claims? So just because J2 is found in one British family, which is probably but not certainly of Norman origin, that doesn't mean we can associate the Normans with this lineage, especially when only two out of 89 of the sampled families from modern Normandy in the 2016 study had J2. And what about Hugh Montgomery's favourite claim that the J2 lineage comes from Semitic kings, of what he has called in his books the Davidic lineage? That is pure nonsense. J lineages originated in the Middle East, that's true and they are indeed associated with Semitic peoples as well, but not exclusively so. And they entered Europe from Anatolia in the Neolithic 8,000 years ago, and that's at the same time the first ever proto-Semitic language was spoken all the way on the other side of Anatolia in the Levant. So even when the first Semites existed, there were already J2 haplogroups in Europe. So we don't need to associate J2 in Europe with Semitic people. Indeed, we don't need to associate J2 in the Middle East exclusively with Semitic people. Montgomery writes in his book that the dominant ruling class of Viking Age Scandinavia must have descended from the Middle Eastern Kassites of the second millennium BC. And this is ridiculous for several reasons. One being that Kassite isn't even a Semitic language anyway, so there's no reason to call the Kassites Semitic kings. We got plenty of DNA from ancient Scandinavia not only Viking Age Scandinavia, but going all the way back to the Bronze Age Scandinavia, and none of it has Levantine admixture, no Mesopotamian admixture is there at all. So we can be quite sure there was no migration of Kassites to Scandinavia. Here you can see that the Scandinavian Bronze Age paternal lineages are mostly R1B and I1. And in this chart, you can see Viking Age men were mainly I1, R1B, and R1A, 
and only 1% have J2 lineages, and these are not particularly associated with king's burials. And this chart here shows paternal lineages of 32 Viking Age samples from England, and there are none with J2 in England. A third reason it's absurd is that besides being able to see if there were Mesopotamian Y lineages entering Scandinavia in ancient samples, we'd also be able to see autosomal DNA uh, evidence, and there's none of that either. Yet another reason it's absurd is that there are many more plausible sources for J2 lineages in northwestern Europe besides Mesopotamia. In Europe, J2 lineages are especially associated with the early Bronze Age Greeks, and the Illyrians of the Iron Age, who come from the Balkans. Neither of those peoples are Semitic. Both of them are Indo-European, and they come from Europe. The majority of J2 lineages in modern Britain and France are likely to have been mediated via a Roman context. That is, people associated with the Roman Empire during the period of imperial expansion. A variety of people carrying these lineages spread through the Roman Empire, including, for example, soldiers of Illyrian origin. There is no reason to specifically associate the lineage exclusively with Semitic people. Today, less than half of Ashkenazi Jewish men themselves actually have J-derived paternal lineages. And that's not just J2, that's all J lineages. So even when we're actually talking about Semitic people like Jewish people, they can't be defined exclusively by J lineages. The most probable explanation for why the Montgomery family is associated with J2 lineages is simply that it was acquired from an Englishman or a Frenchman in the medieval period. We have no way to connect the Montgomery family line back to Scandinavia or even to any specific people in Normandy itself. And we have even less reason to refer to this lineage as Semitic. And despite what Hugh Montgomery claims, you can't connect the Montgomery family to Rollo and the, the, to the Ulvanger dynasty of Scandinavia. We cannot connect that lineage of J2 to Rollo. There is no reason to think that a majority of Normans carried J2. All the evidence we have, and that's not a, enough evidence I'd like, I'd like to have a lot more, points to J2 being an extremely rare and unusual lineage, both in Viking Age Scandinavia and in Normandy and in Viking Age and Norman era England as well. So J2 was not an important haplogroup, doesn't seem to have been associated with a lot of Norman lineages. It may have been associated with the Montgomerys, but we can't trace the Montgomery family back that far, so we don't know that for sure either. Thanks for watching Survivor Jive. If you'd like to learn more about Viking Age DNA or Anglo-Saxon DNA, I've done videos and streams about those topics. And I've also made documentary films all about Viking Age and Anglo-Saxon religion, if you'd like to learn about the pagan religion which worshipped the Norse god Odin. Check out some of my videos on my channel and you'll find lots of interesting content, I assure you. And may I please urge you also to support me. I make a living from this channel and I very much appreciate any donations you can give, no matter how small. Also, if you become a patron on Patreon, of course, you're going to get some special treatment. I've got all kinds of exclusive content that you can only access if you do become a patron. And I also do voice chats on Telegram with my esteemed patrons, and they can ask me all the questions they're burning to ask in person, on the phone, or on the internet. And all you have to do is sign up on one of the two subscription-based sites for patronage. One is called Patreon, the other is called Subscribestar. You'll find the links in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Keep surviving the jive.